Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we are doing this beautiful poem that touched my heart when I heard it for the first time. Um, if you just heard that recording that I sent you of Mustafa Altif from Egypt who sang it. And I remember thinking, wow, these words are so powerful. I have to know what this means. And then I went on to it itself. Um, I signed myself to um, uh, decipher the meaning. And that's when it started. So today I was thinking that since many people can't make it, and also because I don't like to rush through, through things, it might make more sense to just do half of the poem, if that's all right. Um, so then we can just relax and chill out and not be all like stressed out. I felt like last week I was trying to get everything done um, at the end. So let's play it by ear and see how it goes, okay? So does everybody have, um, you need to have a copy of the poem, the Qasida in front of you? And um, the other thing is, yeah, how do I do this? Okay, the other thing that I wanted to say is that um, as I've, um, there were many, many uh, tashkil problems with this, um, with this uh, qasida. So as I pasted it in, in here, I've left out some of the, the, the tashkil. So listen, and you might have to fill in the tashkil. I hope that you guys have printed it out. I don't know about you, but that's the only way that I can analyze things is I need to actually physically have a piece of paper. So this poem, this qasida, it's attributed to Imam Ali, but I've heard that it seems to be a bit of a mishmash. Okay, mashallah, we have a new attendee. Ahna wa sahnan, marhaba, assalamu alaikum. So um, it seems to be a bit of a mishma mishmash. I actually know somebody who told me that a scholar in Mauritania read it and he said that he could actually swear, swear that the first part of the poem is attributed to Al um, Atahia, a, a, a different uh, po poet, and then maybe puts by Imam Ali and somebody else, because we don't really know, but it's attributed to Imam Ali. So because of that, um, I'm going to just mention a bit about him. Could you please all uh, mute your mics, please? Um, mute, mute. Everyone's muted. Okay, I think everyone's muted. Okay, great. Okay, so Ali, um, I'm sure you're all familiar with him, Ali, but Ali radiallahu anhu ibn Abi Qadib was the son um, of, of the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, and he was also the first to embrace Islam from the youth. He married the Prophet's daughter, Fatima, radiallahu anha. And he was also one of the 10 people who was given glad tidings of paradise. He was also the fourth Khalifa of Islam for a period of five years um, after Uthman, radiallahu anhu. And he was a prolific, a prolific scholar and an eloquent orator. His sermons and maxims have been collected in a popular book called Nahajul Balagha. And according to most scholars, he passed away at the age of 63. Regarding his poetry, um, numerous poems have been attributed to him, although the veracity has been disputed. And his poem, his poetry is known for its wisdom and eloquence. So we're going to get right into it. I'm first going to recite it. Um, there are also online a few uh, with the variations, like they only have part of the poem or they switch certain words. So we'll talk about that as we go through. Okay. An nafsu tabki ala dunya wa qad animat. An na salamata fiha tarku ma fiha. La dara lil mori bada al moti yaskunuha. Illa lati kana kabla al moti yabniha. Fa in banaha bi khairin, kaba maskanuha. Wa in banaha bi sharin, kaba baniha. أين الملوك التي كانت مسلطنة أما سقاها بكأس الموت ساقيها أموالنا لذوي الميراث نجمعها ودورنا لخراب الدهر نبنيها كم من مدائنا في الآفاق قد بنيت أمست خرابا وأفنى الموت أهليها لكل نفس وإن كانت على وجل من المنية آمال تقويها المرء يبسطها والدهر يقبضها والنفس تنشرها والموت يطويها Could you please mute your mics, please mute your mics. Okay. Okay. إن المكارم أخلاق مطهرة 
الدين أولها والأقل ثانيها والعلم ثالثها والحلم رابعها والجود خامسها واللين ساديها والبر سابعها والشكر ثامنها والصبر تاسعها والفضل باقيها والنفس تعلم أني لا أصادقها ولست أرشد إلا حين أعصيها لا تركنن إلى الدنيا وما فيها فالموت لا شك يفنينا ويفنيها وعمى لدار غد رضوان خازنها والجار أحمد والرحمن ناشيها قصورها ذهب والمسك طينتها وزعفران حشيش نابت فيها أنهارها لبن مصفى ومن عسل والخمر يجري رحيقا في, مج في مجاريها والطير تجري على الأغصان عاكفة تسبح الله جهرا في مغانيها من يشتري الدار في الفردوس يعمرها بركعة في ظلام الليل يحييها so beautiful, mashallah. Okay, so um, welcome, latecomers. We're going to just try and get through the first half of the poem today. Um, I really hope you have a copy. And um, uh, just to remind everyone that whenever we start our class, the request is that we start five minutes early so we don't interrupt the class and we can start straight, o'clock, straight away at eight o'clock um, South African time. Um, and uh, also when you are in the room to please keep your mics on mute unless we get to the question time or discussion, or if you want to ask a question, that's cool too. Okay, so, um, so Bismillah, we're going to say, An-nafsu tabki ala dunya wa qad alimat. An-nafsu, okay, the soul, the soul cries, or the soul weeps, the soul weeps uh, regarding the dunya, this world, wa qad alimat. Now, this is interesting because what is who I mean who can tell me? I want you to tell me what is this what what does nafs mean? Somebody tell me. Mm, the the soul, 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 soul or the, the or the self. The self. So this is interesting because I was having a discussion with a friend because I had translated it as the soul weeps regarding the dunya. Why? Because indeed she knows. And by the word way, the word nafs is a feminine word. Which is why we have why we have um, it's got a feminine tire, okay? Ali mat because it's referring to nafs, which is a feminine word, okay? So I said, so what does this nafs know? Anna salamata that well-being or contentment, contentment in it again, fiha. This is a feminine um, attached pronoun because it goes back to dunya okay so it's saying that that the nafs knows that contentment within it lies in tarku leaving that this is like what we call in english a relative pronoun or ism mausul it it is leaving that which is within it so i was saying that the soul knows the soul weeps about the dunya because it and it knows that contentment in it lies in leaving it and this person was saying no it's not soul it's the person and maru the individual the human being mankind a human a person knows the person sorry a person cries or weeps over the dunya uh, because indeed the snuffs the soul this person knows that contentment in it lies in leaving it so it's up to you um in my uh in my uh, opinion, I like the whole concept of the soul because in my opinion, again, he totally disagreed with me because I feel that the soul knows its original purpose on this earth because of its fitra. And as in the Quran, Allah says, um, he asked the souls, Alas to be rabbikum. And all the souls said, Bala, shahidna, uh, am, am I not your Lord? And all the souls testified and says, indeed, I uh, we, we bear witness, witness to that. And then we forget about it. So even though we're in khafla and heedlessness, but the soul actually knows its state. But he said that, no, it doesn't make sense from the rest of the poem. So it's up to you, however you want to take it. Uh, this is the whole beauty of poetry. You can interpret it as you like. 
Okay, so I just wanted to mention something about this word tabki. Tabki, I'm going in a lot of detail today because uh, we um, are not going to rush today, but there are different opinions of the ulama. Um, I'm going to write here. You can spell crying, buka, with a hamza, like that. Or you could spell buka, like, come on. Hope you can see that. Buka, it's arif maksura. Buka or buka. So this is a daqiq point, it's a subtlety, where some of the ulama say that when you have um, buka like this, it's where you're crying, but where it's audible, you can actually hear sound. And when you have buka, that's spelled like that, it's where you are um, shedding tears, but there's no sound. But uh, just as a small fine point about that. And then also, if we're looking at the word dunya, okay, I would prefer to have the non-Arabs answer this because you probably already know the answer to this. But can anyone tell me what does the word dunya come from? And what does that mean? Okay, anyone can answer. Go ahead, anyone can answer. What is the word dunya come from? from it's love. also a Gujarati word. Okay, can you tell me about that? Uh, it just means the world. Oh, okay, yes, uh, but we're talking about um, what is the root, what is the root of it mean? This is the beauty of classical oh, art. the root. It comes down to a root. Um, just like, for example, the word for a uterus would be rahim. But the actual root, rahamim, is, has the meaning of mercy. So when you understand the root, it actually expounds upon the meaning of it. Why was the word, why is the word dunya, as we know it, called dunya? Because look at the root, maybe there's a connection between the root and, and as we know it. Um, does anybody, can uh, Could it be, does it come from the root uh, dana ya? which means like lower. So, yes, so it comes from uh, dana yadnu, dana yadnu, and yeah. that can mean either, yani, mean uh, qaruba, um, uh, to be close, to be close, or it can mean to be inferior. So you have something that is adna, inferior, and something that is arqa, superior, okay? So that's why the dunya is called the dunya, because it is inferior, to the next world and secondly it's also close by it's it's what is close to us right now that's why it's called the dunya okay so we have a nafsu tabki ala dunya um i think that we've covered everything over there okay let's move on to the next one i'm just going to clear here and then we have here uh, okay La dara, the word dar, la means there isn't, negative, negation. Dara is a house or home. Mar, lil is a harf of jar. Harf, harf of jar, it means for. There is no home for. Mar'i, mar'i would be a person or individual. Ba'da, after, al maut after death, um, that he could live in. Yaskunuha, yaskunuha. Now, I love this word. Um, because the root of yaskunaha um, would be the same root as the word, as I'm sure you, oh God, eraser, there we go. It would have um, the same root as the word, which you all know, which would be sa, sa ki. Ah, I'm sorry, people. I really wish that I could type in Arabic, but that would, sa ki. No. Okay, do you know the word sakina? Now the word sakina means contentment or tranquility. Okay. And so yes, uh, so a maskan is a place where you live, but um, it, you don't have to have a maskan, you can call it many other words, but the 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 association with, with sakina is that there's sukun, it's a place of comfort, a place of rest, a place of of tranquility, right? And from the same word, from the same root as yaskun, you have, um, you know, if you must know a, a poor person, a miskin, you must have heard, oh, you have to feed the masakin, right? You have to help the masakin. Why is miskin called miskin with the same root as sakina? 
because the miskin he needs to he he needs to find comfort with other people. He's dependent. He finds comfort um, and solace with other people. And also another word from this root of um, uh, sakina would be a skin. Sakin is a knife. And I never thought that there was an association with sakina and sakin, a knife, but there actually is because when you use a sakin, it actually calms the movement of the animal, the madhbuh, when you are slaughtering it. Interesting association there. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so we have here, there is no abode for the for a person to reside in after 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 death illa except the one which kana it was before death he built it or he constructed it yabni yabniha okay okay um that's pretty clear yeah okay فَإِنْ بَنَاهَا بِخَيْرٍ طَابَ مَسْكَنُهَا Yeah, we have this word maskan from, saki, from, uh, from yaskunuha. So yaskunuha over here, this is the verb, present tense verb. This is your ism. It's a noun. And this would be in uh, ismu makan. Dharf, dharfu makan. Okay? Uh, maskan, a place where you reside in. So if he built it, فَإِنْ This is a condition, like a, a short, right? If he built it in banaha, again, why ha? Ha is a feminine attached pronoun because it's going back to the dar, dar, which is feminine. If he built it upon goodness, with goodness, by doing good things, if he did it with goodness, taba maskanuha, then tayyib will be um, its the, the abode. Tayyib meaning latif, like pleasant and wholesome and good and lovely. Okay. Wa in banaha, but if he built it, bisharrin by evil, then khaba baniha, then ruined will be the bani. Bani is an ism fine, so it's the builder, the one who built it. So it's, but it's baniha, ha going back to dar. So baniha would be its builder, the builder of this dar. So khaba, this bani will be ruined. um ruined or no let's not say ruined yeah sorry i'm getting mixed up with kharab maybe let's say lost to be lost i apologize i was getting mixed up with kharab maybe for khaba like if you are like khayyab to amni like i'm disappointed um to be lost let's just say lost to lose something you'll be at a loss okay um it's a khaba from khayba yeah so if khayba if someone has khayba, it will be uh, like um, khayba amal al-insan. person has an expectation and al khayba is to feel uh, not getting what he expected. What's the word? Right, that's what I just said. Yeah, disappointed. Disappointed. Disappointed yes. is the word, yeah. Right. So it could be exactly. right. So to be to lose something like your, as she was saying, your expectations are dashed. Okay. And then we have here, Aina al-muluk allati kanad musantanatan. Where are the kings? Okay, where are the kings? Who were, who reigned sovereign? Now the word, let's look at this word. A muluk is the plural of, I want to write in English because, okay, it's a plural of malik. And that's important to know because people might get confused with malak. A malak is an angel. We're not talking about malak, we're talking about malik, the king, the plural being kings. Okay, so we have your kings. So where are the kings who once, this is past tense, I can can it, they were musaltanatan, they reign sovereign. Okay, uh, as you can see people, what is the, uh, what is going on here? You all know the word sultan, sultan, seen lam tanun. Okay, that's the root here. So that would be, um, yeah, meant to be rulers. Okay. Okay, this a uh, is a, is a, is a, is a, to ask a question, then istifham, to ask a question, ama, and then ma here is like a negation. Did, did, they, did they not? Did they not? Okay, now 
the word here, um, saqaha, you all know the dua. Alhamdulillah, alladhi at'amana wa saqana wa ja'alana min al-muslimin. Saqana, to give, to drink, give, to drink. Okay, so um, the, it would be from saqa, okay, saqa yasqi. Okay, so this is the verb here. Yeah. Did they, were they not? Did they not? Saqaha. Now, who is, what's going on here? Okay. Okay, bika asin, by the cup of death. Saqiha. Okay, so who, what is the duo? We say the fa'il of saqa. It's actually this word here, saqiha. Okay. Um, uh, like so, um, did the the did uh, so, okay? Let's try and say that we can say this. But ama saqaha bi kasil mauti saqiha did not um, they did they not drink? Were they not given drink by the of the by the cup of death? Were they not given the drink of the cup of death? That's not literally what it means. If I want to take it literally, because in English it doesn't sound right, but it's basically saying did not the 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 drink giver give them drink from the cup of death. So in English, that sounds weird. So in English, we would just say, were they, be making it passive in English, were they not, even this is not passive in Arabic, were they not uh, given drink from the cup of death? So who is um, the saqi? Who is the saqi here? Who is the saqi? Anyone? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Um, I don't know. I would, I mean, okay, that's an interpretation. I would say something else. Anybody else? Again, I'm not telling you you're wrong. You know? Okay? What was the question? Who is the Saqi? Who's the Saqi? So she said Allah. But I would... Um, I would say the, the, the angel of death. Yes, that's what I would say. Medical mode, the angel Medical of mode, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then we have here. Amwaluna lidha wil mirathi najma'uha. Our wealth. Amwal is the plural of mal. Can we do it? Mal amwaluna, amwaluna, our wealth, our riches. Okay. Li the will mirathi najma'uha. Okay, we're going to change the order, but in English, because it's going to sound weird otherwise. Najma'uha to gather. We gather it. This ha ya'ud ilal amwal. Okay, it's feminine. Remember how we say that when you have things that are khair aqil, things that do not have intelligence, they're not cognitive beings. Um, we refer to them as um, feminine singulars. That's why we say amwal is a she, basically. So we gather our amwal. We gather it, amwal, for who? Lida will. Okay. In 10 minutes, this is going to cut. Um, we will just um, uh, rejoin. And please remember to mute your mics. Thank you. No, I didn't want to upgrade. How do I get out of here? Come on. I don't want to upgrade. Okay, maybe this is not closing. Like it. Oh, I know, maybe I need to click my mouse. There we go, problem solved. Okay, sorry. Okay, and while, so we gather our wealth, our riches for Lida Will Mirathi. Do you remember we did this in the other poem that we had the, what was it again? Samaya probably remembers the line. Because she asked me about the grammar analysis of it. The qalbin qanu'in. I think it was. Thank you. We said this word the means possessor of, sahib, possessor of. Um, so this is just plural. So it's the possessor of mirath, of inher inheritance. So basically it's referring to the heirs or inheritors. I write this in English because uh, we don't pronounce the H in English. Oops. Heirs. Okay, that is Lida um, Will Mirath, possessors of inheritance, pretty much. Okay, this whole thing is 
that. So we gather our wealth, our riches for our heirs. وَدُورُنَا لِخَرَابِ الدَّهْرِ نَبْنِيهَا Dur is the plural of dar. Our houses or our abode, our, our residences, okay? لِخَرَابِ الدَّهْرِ They are for, um, they are, uh, okay, let's put it this way. أَمْوَالًا لِذَوِي الْمِرَاتِ نَجْمَعَهَا وَدُورُنَا لِخَرَابِ الدَّهْرِ نَبْنِيهَا so we we build these houses, okay? But these houses are basically for, left to the ruin of time. This is ruin. Dahar is time, the passing of time. Time is dahar, okay? Um, if you would like to see my other translate, let me see if I can do it here. Ah, I didn't want you to see the rest. Okay, but this was my translation as we've had so far. Man, or as I said, the soul, laments this world, well aware that contentment is only found in detachment from it. Then, uh, There is no abode for man to dwell in there and after death, except one he constructed or built before his death. You can choose which uh, English word you prefer. And if he built it by goodness, then pleasant will be his abode. And if he built it by evil, then ruined will be its, so not ruined, it's a lost, right? Lost will be its builder. Where are the kings who were one sovereign? Ainan muluk. Have they not all been served drink from the cup of death? And here we are. We amass, we gather riches for our heirs, and we construct our dwellings only to have them fall ruin by time. You see, we, uh, we uh, yes, so we are massa, and we construct these houses, nabniha, we build these dur, only to have them fall to the ruin of time. Can we take more? Yes, we can take more. Kam min madain, kam min madaina. Why is it madaina? Anyone know? Why is it madaina and not madaini? Is it ghair mansuraf? Exactly. Because it's supposed to be traditionally people that after a harfujar it would be a kasra, like min um, Muhammadin, min um, madrasati. Uh, but here we have a fatha over here. This is a grammar point. If you don't care about grammar, ignore this. It's fine. It's got a fatha here because these are one of the words that are, we don't conjugate them in that way. They are exceptions. Such as um, all of the non Arab names are all non conjugatable, non Ghair Munsari. For example, you will never see a Kasra on Yusuf or Ibrahim. It will be uh, Ila Yusufa or Min Ibrahima. You never see it because those words never take a Kasra in the state of Jar. If you don't know what I'm talking about in grammar, it's cool. Don't worry about it. Okay, so how many? Okay, Madain. Madain is the plural of. Mudun. Mudun is a dhamma here and a dhamma here. Mudun. Now, mudun, mudun in itself is already a jama. It is a plural word. It means cities. Mudun is the plural of Medina. You all know Medina is city. So, Medain is like a jama of a jama. That makes sense. It's a plural of a plural. Okay, so how many cities? Fil afaq. So, the word afaq means horizons. The plural, it's the plural of ufuq. 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 Okay, ufuq afaq. So how many cities on the horizons were built? So it doesn't literally mean on the horizon, but in English we'd say like all over the world. How many cities were built everywhere, right? Um, I'll get to my more eloquent translation later for the, if you want the flowing translation. Come Medain, how many uh, how many cities were built? And what happened to these cities? Amsat kharaban. Amsat is like the meaning of asbahat to become, to become. Okay. Um, let me just put in the English here for people here to become. Okay. How many cities, as I said here, Ufuk here would be. Okay, how, and this is, a, by the way, over here, buniyat is a passive verb. Remember we had banaha, baniha, build, builder, buni, bana is to build, buniyat is a passive verb. So it was 
um, were built, passive, okay, were built. Um, so then they became, uh, they were ruined, kharaban. Here we have this word kharab, which I got few other word. Okay, so they were ruined, okay. Wa afna. And now, okay, what is the, afna is a verb, by the way. What is the doer or the fine of afna? It's moat. So death destroyed or caused to perish. Death destroyed. Ahliha. Ahli is the plural of ahl, which means people. So ahliya, it's, it's people. And what is it? What is the ha? Ahl. This ha, which is feminine, goes back to Madain. Remember, non aqil uh, words, plurals, we refer to them as single feminine. So, what did death do? Death ruined its people. Interesting. Why does this word look so funny? Because the plural of there, by the way, in Arabic, you have uh, multiple plurals for words. So, the word I'm telling you now is not the only plural for the word ahan. You can find many. So, you have the word ah. Lean, ahlina, ahlina, just like for example, muslimina, muslimina or mu'minina. And because it's attached to an attached uh, pronoun, yeah, we've dropped this noon. It's the rule of idafa. If you don't understand what I'm saying, don't worry. Okay. So can we move on? Kam min madaina fil afaqi qad bunyat. Amsat kharaban wa afnan mawtu ahliha. Okay. And then we have here. Did I miss out anything? Just one second. I wanted to make sure that I covered everything. Oh, there is a, a little point here. There's a one point here. Uh, amwaluna. Where's Amwaluna? Did I miss it? Here we go. Amwaluna. So, um, Okay, never mind. But let's just say that like there's a, a subtlety, you don't have to know it, but often when the uh, direct object is brought to the front, it's like uh, more emphatic. So for example, if somebody says, Asalallah, I ask Allah, or you say Allah as'alu, um, Allah I ask. Uh, is there a difference between that? So they said, yes, if you have Allah as Allah, like you bring the direct object to the front, it's ikhtis. It's like only Allah. It means like only Allah. So similarly here, if it's like um, Nuruna is brought forward for before, like the direct object is brought ahead before building, it's like only, like this, it's just only to have it all. It's just got the meaning of more ikhtisas, like um, making it more focused or specific on something. But that's just a subtlety. Okay. Yeah, we have here. Likuli nafsin wa in kanat ala wajalin. There's a ten, there's a kasratain yeah, wajalin. Likuli nafsin wa in kanat ala wajalin. And for every soul or every person, depending on how you want to translate it, um, if they were fearful, khauf. So waja would be like um khauf. That would be the synonym.